There are many life philosophies out there, all with their own prescription on how to navigate this existence. And in order to access this wisdom, sometimes you need to sit down for hours going through a large text. Then you reread and read some more and reread that stuff and read commentary on that, then read all the articles written about it, and before you know it, you're old, getting ready to die, and will soon no longer have to deal with those problems. But some of us face burning problems that require immediate attention. So maybe we don't find the solution, but we can at least consider some solutions to find the one that best fits the problems we're having. Well, there's a lot of these solutions in the philosophy of Epicureanism, and here are four big ones that hopefully can apply to your life right now. I'd also recommend checking out my other Epicurean video where we talk about the four-part cure for life. And rest assured, the four ideas we're going to be talking about here are different. This ain't some repackaged, reused Chuck E. Cheese pizza. These are new ideas. So let's kick this list off with number one, value your friends over your lovers. And I'm using the term lovers broadly, to pretty much encapsulate people in your life who you've been romantic with. Now many of us, perhaps myself included, think the reverse of this. We place our value on the romantic life and the romantic characters that appear in our stories. And let's be real here, some of the greatest joys in life can be found in the realm of romance. But Epicureans aren't so crazy about the excess pleasures of the romantic life, especially since it can also be a source of great anxiety. Here's Lucretius, an Epicurean, from his poem On the Nature of the Universe. For to avoid being captured in the snares of love is not so difficult as to escape once in, and break the powerful knots of Venus. And yet, although entangled and ensnared, you can escape this danger unless you stand in your own way, and overlook the faults in the body and the mind of her you love. For this is what men blinded with desire so often do, attributing to them virtues with which in truth they are not endowed. It's not only this idolizing effect of love that we see especially in the age of the internet, but there are other anxieties of love. You have to deal with jealousy and the possibility of cheating. If you go down the closed monogamy route, you can't explore the vast ocean of other people. And then there's this whole idea of one person being invested in the relationship more than the other. But there is a certain love that might be better. Instead of romantic love, look towards friendship. Here's a saying by Epicurus from the Vatican collection of his sayings, number 52, if you're playing at home. Friendship dances around the world, announcing to all of us that we must wake up to blessedness. And here's his principal doctrine, number 27. Of all the things which wisdom provides for the blessedness of one's whole life, by far the greatest is the possession of friendship. Now one can achieve many of the benefits of a romantic relationship through friendship. Friends are people to talk to and socialize with share passions with, get food with, laugh with, and really good friends can be trusted with your honest feelings and deep secrets. But obviously you don't have sex or be romantically intimate with people who are just friends. And perhaps this desire for intimate physical connection shouldn't be overlooked. Like what if God came to you right now and said, yeah okay for the rest of your life you aren't going to get laid again, and you aren't going to get romantic with anyone again. I'll let you get your last kiss with this teddy bear I bought at Build-A-Bear Workshop, but after that you're done, buddy. Like, wouldn't you throw that bear at the wall and get super depressed afterwards? However, we gotta admit, these anxieties of a romantic relationship aren't that prevalent in a friendship. I mean, there are those little pushbacks where someone starts hanging out with someone else more and there can be some jealousy in friendship. But let's be real, it isn't at the level of romantic relationships. So look, you get a lot of benefits out of really good friendships that you also get from relationships. Not all of them, but some of them. And there's less anxiety attached. But despite this, we tend to value our romantic lives over our friendship lives. Perhaps one might flip that around and see how that works. So the next consideration is to consider food from the aspect of fulfilling hunger rather than based on taste. Hey, I didn't say I agree with these. I don't even know if I agree with the first tip. But some people find it useful, so I might as well explain this one. So a big part of Epicureanism is not so much about excess pleasure, what we typically think about when we think of hedonism. You know, the whole sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Epicureanism is more about removing pain. And one of those pains is hunger. So Epicurus might be more concerned with addressing hunger, rather than trying to get pleasure off of good tasting food. Here's number 33 of the Vatican sayings. The cry of the flesh. Not to be hungry, not to be thirsty, not to be cold. For if someone has these things and is confident of having them in the future, he might even contend with Zeus for happiness. And it may not be super nutritional, but one can address that hunger through food that you could buy at the dollar store. 
but if we're being real, eating without regard for taste is pretty hard. I tried to do this meal prep bulking thing where I ate chicken and rice every single day, and I eventually gave up on it because it was boring and bland and McDonald's has those evil glowing golden arches just begging me to drive through. At the same time, there are people who drop serious money on some super pricey food all the time. Like I get it, I really do, you want to celebrate something like a birthday, you go out and get that sushi boat or Korean barbecue with your friends. But getting Cheesecake Factory every day? First off, how do you afford that? Second off, wouldn't it get boring? Look, just remind yourself that one of the main reasons you eat is to get rid of hunger. Yes, another reason can be flavor and trying out new things, but hey, try to at least balance the two out, you know? Number three is to be wary of the political life. Epicurus and his followers created a school called the Garden, but in addition to being a school, it was also kind of like a commune from what I could tell. The Epicureans separated themselves from public life. But why is this? Well, what is the political life? What does it mean to be political? Perhaps it could be thought of as imagining an ideal society in your head and then working towards changing the world to fit that image. But what if this process is spread amongst all these different people with their own ideal society? This makes conflict inevitable, but one might say that there are political parties where people can sometimes agree on that ideal society. Perhaps, but I think there's still conflict within those political groups. One only has to think of Stalin eliminating his rivals who were once his allies, or the in-group fighting of political parties today. With politics comes conflict and anxiety, and while these problems may be worth it to some in order to fight for that ideal society, it could also block someone from achieving tranquility and peace. And finally, number four is to appreciate the smaller things in life. I think about Epicureanism like a pendulum. It could flow in the direction of pain, which needs correcting back to the center, or it can flow in the direction of pleasure, then swing back towards pain. We should be aiming for that stable center, free from pain, but also without any excess pleasures. But doesn't this make the center boring and unhappy? Not at all. Again, a lot of Epicureanism is about prudence because happiness can be achieved simply if your needs are met. Life provides these natural joys, but what are these natural joys? Looking at a beautiful sunset, the sound of birds in the morning, stargazing, looking up into the clouds and seeing images. There's these things that exist for us to enjoy without any anxiety or toil attached. But we look past these things because we want more, and when we want more, we suffer. Learn to live contently and enjoy what naturally comes with life. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it applicable to your life in some way. If you didn't, then I owe you a video that will. So subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when another video drops. As always, I wish you all a very beautiful rest of your day.